I was talking a little earlier and um we, we we had mentioned panic and we talked about Khadija and we were talking about you know it was dope Khadija again with panic and you know everything panic's been through with his moms and stuff I could see how much help having that queen in his life had meant to him and me and um Red was just talking about you know the importance of having a solid a solid queen by your side and it's just in times like these man where it's so confusing out there when there's so much craziness going on in the world I just like my message to the brothers out there would be is is now is more important ever now to get you a queen fellas you know what I'm saying you know women are down for a lot of things now if you want to get your little son on the side a woman to just be honest with her but get you a queen uh, 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 right, right. get you a queen and I, I guarantee and number one it'll boost your finances it'll boost you and pretty much every which way you're going to go through your ups and downs depending on how long y'all together that happens with all of us yeah. Yeah. It's essential you talk about essential brothers man get you a queen man get you a, get you a friend mm. you know what I'm saying mm. that queen should be your friend somebody that you could converse That's with That's you know what I mean and like you know my 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 parameter my my mental litmus used to always be like I gotta be able to see myself with this person, you know, past the age of like 60 or 70 on a rocking chair. You know what I'm saying? Getting getting old telling old war stories and shit like that. But nowadays it's like, yo, you know, y'all both gotta be able to make it through the forest, you know, away from the 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 vaccine box and shit like that. Like, you know, what does survival 2022 look like? Right. And right. then not a, not a no fear campaign is just talking about preparation and being ready and refusing to be a cog in somebody else's machine. You know what I'm saying? Or, uh, uh, you know, an exclamation point in somebody's agenda. Like B, you owe it to yourself to let these, these dunces and these, these, you feel me like let them play their games over there like they're not even worthy of your time Yo. these niggas doofuses like come on for real facts you know let I your intelligence kick in and you know you have to plot plan and strategize better than whatever the hell is going on out here i don't even know who, who we could point at and put it on at this particular point but just know that this shit is dying and anybody telling you different is blind as a bat. You know what I'm saying? They don't have quantum vision. So if you want to participate in a sinking ship, you know what I'm saying? And, and you swear that your swimming skills is up to par like that. Once again, like I said, good luck, my nigga. But if you also understand that these people are going to have their hands tied and they're caught up, now is the perfect time to get low and do for self. You know what I'm saying? Now is the perfect time to get you a partner, get you a friend, Get you somebody that you are willing to build a future with and, and, and start doing that. And stop broadcasting everything. Mm. Yeah. This is my you advice think, to the fan. Hold you on. Think, go ahead, right? Get you a hippo lighter. What's that, Red? I don't... <laughs> Love crab. Come on, don't do that to us. Man. Oh, no, I have it. I stopped watching. I got to catch up. Nah, get you a hippo lighter in your life. Get you an all set if you want to be a saw. Get you a heru. Whatever you do, fellas, make sure that you find your divine reflection. You know what I mean? That is very essential. I would say for this whole 2020 journey, outside of the whole political theater, and everything else that we're talking about, I will hearken right back to the earlier conversation about what is essential. What's essential is healing. What's essential is going within, taking that journey, going to a place to where you can heal. It's going to be inside of you. But guess who can help you go inside of you? Your queen, your Hippolyta. She could, she could snatch your soul one night and you could take a trip and come back a different person. She could talk to you. She could touch you in a way. She could have healing hands. She could heal you from an injury that you went through as a child. You understand? With her nurturing. You don't got to go to a therapist. You don't have to go to a drug. You don't have to go to a vice. You don't have to turn to a quote unquote 
You know, she is the nurturer. She is the elixir. She is the drug. She is the doctor. She is the cure. She's the cure to the king's disease. The cure to the king's disease is the queen. You know what I mean? The queen's honey. So I just, I, yeah, I, I, I think that even surrounding yourself with positive, divine, feminine energy, and also having yourself a queen that you love, and it's, it's your divine reflection, that is the winning formula. That is, in my humble opinion, to the men, the men and the women that I met, and I walked away saying in my mind, yo, they are successful, and I, I they, their goals. None of them was single and horny mm -hmm. and, and, and degenerate and, and uncouth. None of them were lonely and acting like they needed, they acting all needy and whatnot. No, they all, all of their cup was running over. That's an aspect of success to be well kept. And you need to be kept by somebody. Somebody should love you, you know? So we should be focusing on affairs of the heart, you know, taking retreats where there's couple retreats, single retreats. Um, but for the brothers and the sisters that are trying to get in relationships, mushrooms, ayahuasca, and that bufu before you even go there. Get on your healing shit, bro. Or do it with your mate. You don't got to be lonely to do it, but it should be about, I mean, that's just my opinion because I've seen a lot this year. And to be honest with you, that's what's that that's that's the that's that's the um that's what's in the in the front of the marathon. It's in front of the bag. Right. You said it's in front of the bag? That's the real bag because man make the money, money don't make the man. When you get everything together, you just manifest you you like magneto to the bread. You know what I mean? The you the the check is gonna chase you, is running to you. You know what I mean? You dodging calls. The money is come is the money will come to you. You got to get the foundation together and everything, and then you magnetize. So, yep, that's in front of the bag. Yeah, that, that that's some real shit right there, man. That's that's definitely real. What 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 do you think it is? Um, what what do you think is what's the biggest piece of advice you could give the brothers out there who may feel as though there's no good sisters out there? What's the Biggest piece of advice, if we're saying how important the queen is, what would you tell them just to, you know, get them started on that journey? Besides, I, mean, you said healing. I know you said healing, right. but an anything else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would, I would change my perceptor, my, my perception, my per field of perception. I would change the music that I'm listening to. I would also change the movies and the stimuli that I look at, right? I'm going through a process right now of unfollowing a lot of um you know um of my instagram followers because my my daughter be using my phone and she's on my instagram a lot so i have to be wary of my scroll right so as i change the environment of the women or the energy or the caliber of women that may be in my vicinity my vicinity my vicinity right Vicin right i will begin to change my reality and when I stop listening to certain kind of music that is going to perpetuate the at the um the the mind state of degrading women or women being worthy of being degraded, because if I'm only listening to music that's degrading women, if I'm watching um if I'm a voyeur and I'm watching videos and stuff like that where women are being assaulted, degraded, and violated and whatnot. If I'm watching uh, videos or if my content is women being exploited, if my entertainment is watching women argue, bicker and go at each other and whatnot, then it will not be far-fetched if I am able to begin to reflect that in my quote-unquote reality. Now, if I decide to change that up, listen to soul music, listen to love music, Listen to music that were praising the divine feminine principle. Listen to some jazz, spoken or, word. Or, or making that music. Or you begin to make that music. You begin right. to pick up the pen and you change your thought patterns and you force your mind to go into places to whereas you could do what? You could respect the divine feminine principle. You should study it the same way that someone goes to a museum and they study the sculptures and whatnot. You should be a student of it. 
you should you should learn it you know what i mean and then express it in whatever gift or talent that you have so i feel that it's if you be if you take that step forward to say you know what i'm i'm stepping into reality where i'm going to manifest these goddesses that i be hearing about and i know that they exist because i don't know about everybody but I feel like everybody at least one time in their life came across one of them, at least, to at least know what it is to be in the presence of a goddess, to at least know what it is to be in the presence of a woman who basically just makes the hairs on your, your body raise up, you know? And we are sexually dysfunctioned yeah, as, as young adults. You sound like you in love, brother. Not at all. You said a woman make the hair on your body right? I mean, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. That's right? what I first sight. Yeah, that brother. is love. Brother, you descriptive. Right? Because keep in mind, the, the energy, remember, rich, blue. Yes, sir. Sentient light being, spiritual beings having a human experience, right? Mm -hmm. Love being the original creative energy, right? Uh, aspect of the all, aspect of the creator divine presence is pure love. Hate being uh, 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 on the spectrum of said energy, but on the furthest uh, reaches of that spectrum. That's where, that's where you find fear. That's where you find envy. That's where you find hate. All of that other stuff is on the other spectrum of what we see as pure divine love. The same love where the children were created from the same love that you feel when you're in a state of bliss, when that what sentient light being or that soul is able to find its reflection. They call it a soulmate. They call it a twin flame, love at first sight and all of these other things. So ultimately that is our journey here. That is our, that's one of our goals for even being here is to find your divine reflection, to find your better half, to find your twin flame and to do what? To come together and to procreate what? The Heru, the better part of both of you. You know what I'm saying? Because if you find the one that they say is the one, you got more, more chances than, than less or nine times out of 10, you will create what is known as a love child. Mm, and it, these are where the miracle babies come from. Nice. You can go and do your research. These are where the miracle children come from. Because the parents got it right. That's where you get arranged marriages from. That's where you get high science where they were doing charts and whatnot. They were able to do charts. So they were lining up certain people with other certain people based off of their charts because it was a yeah. divine connection. Yeah, their compatibility. The compatibility. Cinderella in the glass shoe. Right? Arranged marriages. Not to make nobody upset. Arranged marriages with the science of husbandry. Right. There's a science to mating. There's a science to um, of, of birth. There's a science of death. There's a science of husbandry. They do it with the livestock and the animals now. But we had that science. Yo, if 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 y'all had a choice, like, you know, y'all like the red and the blue pill and y'all was about to incarnate down in this room and you knew what this room was about and you had the option of getting. Five hundred million your birthright you get it as soon as you're born or whenever you want to get it during the course of a life, or you got the option of just falling in love, which one y'all going to choose, man? Which one y'all going to choose? Um, I, yeah, I, I mean, if my, my ancient knowledge, right? Because we're coming from somewhere apparently that, you know, we have a different level of oversight. We've done this a few times over. We know what it's hitting for. I'm going to choose the love because that, you know, when you strip everything down, you know, I've been watching a lot of documentaries on primitive tribes, you know, in the Amazon and the Congo and the this and the that, you feel me? And mm -hmm. one of them that I watched the other day, you know, these Congolese um, pygmies were coming out of seclusion and the forest, the, the, the log traders were now coming into their vicinities and they, they came with the bag. So son is like, the chief is like, yo, I'm too old to play the money game. I don't know it. But he's like, mm. you know, my children, they're going to be in place now to play, you know, this money game. You feel me? It's a new thing to them. But prior to that, you know, they were speaking about, look, we already know what we came here for. 
You know what I'm saying? They have a whole creation myth about the first woman who encountered the men. And, and you know, she let all of them smack. <laughs> <laughs> but they were like, look, we came here to procreate and, and, and propagate our species onto the next thing. You know what I'm saying? I did a post the other day when I was speaking about ancestors. And I'm like, look, if we just go back to the 1700s, which is um, 300 years ago, right? A generation lasts for 30 years. So that's 10 generations. You have 1,024 ancestors just from 300 years ago going through your veins. If there was a time, if there was no time when man was not, and you probably been here for millions of years because your atomic matter don't have no time record on it. You know what I'm saying? It's ancient. Mm -hmm. You've probably been here for millions of years and you are the evidence of the continuity of your bloodline and your species still running that marathon, right? You got the hand of baton. You feel me? You got to keep running. So, yeah, I would, I would opt for the love. Because think about it, Rich. Ultimately, we are going to accumulate $500 million, right? To do what? What are we acquiring? What are we reaching for? We're ultimately reaching for love. We are going to utilize the budget of $500 million to exhaust our desires and to buy love. Well, I mean, I mean yeah, for, for attraction purposes, it's not always... It ain't always for love. You know what I'm saying? No, of course. That's what I'm saying. It, it, it could be but, for the propagation. The propagation it, doesn't necessarily mean it could be for lust. love. Yeah. Yeah. It could be for pure lust, pure carnal pleasure, pure hedonism. I could take the 500 million. What if you took 500 million and went to DR? DR. <laughs> 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 you had a Viagra plant, right? <laughs> no, you need it. You don't need it. <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> Shit. And they go on for 20 up. <laughs> Damn, bro. <sighs> My nigga. You were, I'm just saying, like, that would lead to exhausting of oneself. You could die before you spend that money. I would opt for the love. You know why? Because ultimately, I would never want to be the $500 million man who's empty inside and is depressed and don't want to live because I've, I've been around people who fall into those traps, not saying that that's the quality of people with $500 million because it doesn't have to be like that. But if it is about acquiring wealth for ultimate happiness and to be, and to be successful and to be at peace, if love is gonna bring that, then I would skip. I would go for the love, you know what I mean? And, and I know people would be like, you capping. No, I would go for being, feeling at home, feeling blissful, feeling love. Like if you know the love, the, 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 you know the love that you be on before the, before the, uh, before the, the, the mess up, you know, when they say the honeymoon is over, Right, right. You know, when you first get in a relationship and that shit is going Tesla cruise control and then you fuck up, you're like, damn, it'll never be the same. That love right there, the shit where you can't eat if she don't answer the phone. Like, if I could be in that zone, the love that you have for your child, unconditional. When you're looking at your baby smiling or the first time your baby said, daddy, you know, that type of love where your heart is just you know, light as a feather. Yeah, give me that. I'm good. What about you, Rich? No, definitely. I'm. I'm, I'm gonna go for the love. I'm. I definitely. I done seen. There's plenty of people. I know personally. There's been times when I had the most and and just ain't feel like you know feel like myself. Then there's times when I didn't have. I thought I didn't have much, but I always have much because that's my nature. So I cannot have much, but I thought I didn't have much and. And, you know, I was happy certain times. So I know that shit, you want ultimately, you know, I guess we got to change, like we said, the definition of things. And wealth to me is peace of mind. You know what I'm saying? Number one. Right. So you got peace of mind. Like what Tony Montana said in the movie, 
the dude told Tony to shoot the car with the um with the kid in it. Tony, so, so Tony ended up killing him. He was like, "You ain't gonna fuck up my sleep." He was like, "No, I got I got to sleep at night." Uh, yeah, had principles. <laughs> even as a killer, even as an. You know assassin, what I'm saying? Yeah. He had principles. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, man, I like I like sleeping with, with, with some peace of mind at night. So you know, money. You know what I mean? That means a lot, bro. Yeah. It's people with the bag and they they got demons. They can't sleep. They can't they can't rest easy. They got to look over their shoulder. You know what I mean? It's so many things that comes with that. So like I, I tell people, I told a sister the other day, I said fame is a hell of a drug. <laughs> Don't you know what I mean? You, you need to go. I didn't say avoid it at all costs because you know what you gonna tell somebody who's popping to avoid fame, but be wary of it. Cause it's a drug. You know, we was um <clears throat> talking earlier about Ice Cube and how it was crazy how all these black celebrities are, are are trying to be the head of politics and the new Al Sharptons for black America and the new Jesse Jacksons are now entertainers and athletes. Um, I want to ask y'all personally because on a, on a conscious level, y'all two of the most well-known faces. So how do you personally deal okay. with being out there in the spotlight and people knowing you and and has it affected your ego where you get caught up in who people think you are or what 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 the, the expectations are you like do you get caught up sometimes in that you want to go this nigga jumps at every other question <laughs> <laughs> Great say you want to go you trying to telegraph go ahead It's a it's the, the 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 dichotomy of fame or being famous or well known. You know, it is an interesting one, Rich. You know, the aspect of being able to see yourself or see what everybody else sees. You know, that also is an interesting concept. The aspect of coming to the mind state of how much you have on your shoulders on a daily basis and who you represent and whose shoulders you stand on and what you represent, man, that could be overwhelming. Mm -hmm. If one was scared of heights, you would, you know, you could naturally suffer from anxiety. If you were an introvert, this could be an uncomfortable journey, bro. Mm -hmm. I feel for individuals who are who who cannot cope with people staring at them and who cannot cope with being able to walk in a room and you feel every every eye on you, all eyes on me. That's not uh, the average person can't deal with that. You ever felt like when you was on a train, everybody was looking at you, and then when you looked up, they everyone looked away? Yeah, yeah. Every yo, that that a lot of people have talked about that, yeah. That's some weird shit, bro. You know. I remember having a, 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 I was on a plane and 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 it's ill how the mind works because I just saw a, a, a TV show and they depicted something like that. I was on a plane, I had a nightmare. I was on a plane and I was sleeping or taking a nap and the, the, the stewardess, you know, she was like, she had like a water for me to drink and she was like red pill. I got a, um, she was like, red pill, red pill. And then I woke up like, what you know? How you know my name? And then as she said it, the whole plane got up. It was filled with white people and they all knew who I was. Mm. And I hopped out of my fucking sleep, scared to death, bro. I was like, damn, I need to stop taking planes. <laughs> mm. And then there was a show that came on called The Boys, <laughs> where it's about a group of superheroes, but they crooked. And one of the here one of one of the superheroes got on a plane and he the shit is crazy. He he basically crashed, yo, the show is crazy. But anyway. It's a it's 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 like I told somebody the other day that I'm we're moving so fast in this movie and in this story that it's very like it took this retrograde that just came in because it's Mercury and Scorpio retrograde. 
it took it came in last night. It took the retrograde to come in to help me slow down my Memorex tape and realize how many how much stuff I've been doing over the past 90 days. You know, sometimes I have to remind myself that I do music because it's not in it's not on my frontal lobe. I don't when I look in the mirror, I'm not seeing myself as a musician. I'm seeing myself as a person as a person who got to get out there and get up with Rich because we got a video to do today because there's a topic that's burning my heart right now and I need to get it out of me because if I don't, I could go crazy. You feel me? I could snap on one of these trains and whatnot. If somebody, if the wrong thing happened on one of them trains, everybody else is snapping, I just might snap too. So being able to get it out, being able to build, being able to, and then people come to you and be like, Brother Red, you know, you don't know what you did for me and my family and how much you changed my life. And, and you know, that right there, yeah. It has layers to it. Yeah, that shit right there. On one hand, it is like, um, it's a testament to what I'm doing is not in vain because I'll never tell anybody about the sacrifice because that's no one's business. You know what I'm talking about? That, you know, what, what you go through in your personal journey should be in a book that's why niggas read books and watch documentaries that's that's not for oh this is not easy because nothing this nothing nothing is legendary like this nothing is going to be in the history books like what it is that all of us are doing how the hell was it going to be easy how was it going to be a, if it was an easy walk it would be a hundred of us there's there's not a hundred of us bro if this was the avengers this is this shit is the Avengers four after the Thanos snap. There's a whole bunch of people done evaporated. Where they at? This God. is this is half the planet populated Avengers. Uh, yeah, this is the Avengers with half this bitch populated. I just watched a video. I, I'm not even gonna get into it. But my have the have the mighty have fallen. Oh my, how have the mighty have fallen? Send it to me, man. I, I'm gonna send it to you. So. Rich, it's weird, bro. It's it's hard to explain. I I I can't see myself, but in order to see myself, I have to see myself. If mm. that makes any sense. Mm. The people that I have around me, I have to be trustworthy of their intentions and whatnot because those are sometimes have to have to be my eyes. I'm like, what do you see? tell me how big am I again what, what do you see you see greatness because I tell everybody else how great they are and I could speak life into in, 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 into many things I could speak life I could help people with a lot of stuff but who the fuck is I'm gonna talk to myself you know ultimately I have to but going back to what I said before that's where your reflection comes in it's her. She's the one. That was. That's what Marcus Garvey had. That's what Elijah had. That's what Malcolm had. What were they there? That's what um, MLK had. What, what, what did they do, though? What did they do? They allowed these men to remain human, stay the course, remain humble. You know, because when you come home, I don't you. You a superstar in these streets. If your wife is really like that, like that, if she's truly your queen, you come home and you're Clark Kent. Mm. You hang up the cape. The cape might come on in the bedroom, but you hang up the cape and you're allowed to be Peter Parker, Clark Kent. You take off the armor. You know what I mean? You take the mask off. You take off the, you know what I mean? You, you soak your feet, you know, you rest up your weapons and whatnot. You clean off your, you know, your sword and she nurtures you and she, she, she stitches you up, wipes off the blood, you know, loves on you and gets you ready for the war again because we're, we're we're in a battlefield we're not rappers you know what i mean we 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 do music and we put great classics out there but we're not living the life of a rapper we're not out here on tour we're not out here doing in-store signings and whatnot we're not freestyling on the corner we are having an intellectual war right carrying 
some of our master teachers who might have got injured in the war to safety, right? While fighting to protect the memories of some of the other ones who fell in the war, but we still having an intellectual war with entities that we don't even see. Right, and then and then preparing the stage for new ones to come. And then preparing the and stage then, for new warriors yeah. to come and in. Gotta, oh. And then curating that shit. Curating that, hoping that they don't stab us. Right, and we don't get friendly fired because you got killmongers out here. They don't, they, they come in to burn down the whole damn kingdom. So you bringing in the new soldiers, you giving them, you know, you running down all of the things, you know, where not to go, this area, you know, giving them the logistics hoping that they don't, that they're going to be honorable at the same time, you still showing up to the war and to the front line. And then you move in the campaign to different areas. Like any campaign would get moved around. They didn't fight world war one and two in one place. Right. They took the battalion and they moved it to different areas or grids or energy ley lines and they went and put in that work. They went and put in that pain and whatnot. So many of us have spread around and we moving around the grids and whatnot. We set up in LA, Atlanta, you know, DC, uh, the Carolinas, VA and whatnot. Go ahead, Blue. Oh yeah. Um, you know, this shit is surreal at the end of the day. And popularity, if you will, like fame and all of that stuff. Like my mother was telling me this earlier today, you know, when we was in the stroller, we was giving, we was getting all of that extra, like people would just stop in the street and just start paying out money and giving it to y'all. And, you know, through junior high school and high school, we was the most popular, you feel me? So popularity and attention and fame and people looking at you, that's nothing new. Weird. That's the difference between us and some of the people in the community, you know, who rose to stardom is that that was it was a that was a new thing for them. It was the opposite of what they were used to. But I think that that's something that we've always dealt with, especially as twins. And I've always, you know, received a, a particular level of attention that might have been for Red. Red might have received a level of attention that might have been for me. So I've already adjusted my own personal um, responses and ego to accept what's for me, you know what I'm saying? And I don't even take credit that's for other people. I'd be like, nah, you need to call him and tell him that, you know what I'm saying? Like, let him get what he deserve, what is his. I, I can't take that for him. Um, it just be them niggas that be running up on me talking about, yo, rapper, you owe me some bread. <laughs> 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 you know that's when the shit gets tricky but in terms of like the ego and stuff like I said you know you can't kill your ego that's that's not realistic you feel me but plant medicine helps you manage your ego you know what I'm saying so ego management you know what I mean in in, in these uh, upper years that we have acquired these 44 years on this planet you know I've learned how to manage ego better you dig what I'm saying I don't I don't necessarily in my personal space I don't think that I've ever lost it in terms of letting it go to my head because there were so many good examples in the community to observe you feel me from day one that you like oh that's what that shit looked like I don't never want to do that I don't never want to be that person you feel me mm. and uh, you know, you make yourself available and approachable and sometimes to, 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 to our detriment. You feel me? I'm trying to get the fuck up out of here right now and not be seen for a while. And that's just, again, for my own personal space and my own personal development. There's things that I need to do for me and my family. There's things that I need to do for my own talent. You know, this, this, you know, what I'm saying. And I gave so much of myself, you know, this year in particular, just to keep up with this, this, this 44th year of my life. You know what I'm saying? 
I was anticipating some major things to happen, but I had to, I had to have a level of momentum. I had to keep it moving. And my marathon had to continue. And um, I'm satisfied, you know, with with with, with the things that uh, we've been able to accomplish not only this year, but this this year was the culmination of so many years and cycles. You know, it was a 10 year culmination. It was a 20 year culmination. God damn it, it's a, a 40 year culmination, if you will. Like, it's just so many things, you know, we're able to meet and, and connect. And there's so much more ahead. There's so much work that needs to be done that I don't really have the, the, the privilege of sitting down and, and making those assessments all the time because tomorrow's another day and this shit mutates. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm. It mutates and you have to be able to find your space and your place within it all because it's almost like, you know, how the white man, his his frustration with nature is nature's always trying to kill him. Mm. Right? It's the same thing with this shit. This shit is always trying to kill you. Okay? <laughs> mm. All right? This game is always attempting or trying to consume you or kill you. Right? For you giving yourself to it. It's a self-consuming cycle. You know what I mean? So that coupled with everything that he said, yeah, man, it's it's. I got, you know. I got, I got a metaphysical question for you. Um, you, you know, you talked about the ego and stuff like that. When I, I remember when I was real young. You know, when you're young and you first form and thoughts in your mind, you learn how to articulate yourself and understand the world around you. I used to always think when I was young that I was the center of the world and that everything around me revolved around me. Eventually, <laughs> people talking to me and, you know, you understanding things. One day, it just clicked and I said to myself, damn, I'm not the center to the other world. Everybody else is living their own individual life. Everybody, the, the world doesn't revolve around me. Now that I'm older, there's some people into the spiritual community that says the world does revolve around you. You are the center of the universe and everybody in your world is just actors. So, what do you think about that mindset, thinking that you're the center of the world? Is that some childish, egotistical shit, or is that no. like an advanced um, perception that we lost due to programming? We lost it. We lost it when I had my Kundalini rising um, experience, and you know, I had this burst of light, and I came into what I considered, you know, an enlightened phase and stage of my life. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the downloads that I got was saying the same thing. It said, if I am one with the all, if, if everything, if all is all things, then it said that it's only one you and every single thing that you see outside of you is an expression or a connection to that. You feel me? Mm -hmm. And I moved around the planet a long time, you know, with that concept actively in my mind. Right. And I would I would interface, interface, interact with people telepathically by observing and acknowledging the light in them on some namaste shit. You know what I'm saying? I observe the light in you, all of that. But I was visualizing it. So I was seeing the light in their heart and I was seeing the light in their, their first eye. And I was communicating and connecting with them like that. And these were things that I had to do to prove to myself that I wasn't crazy. Mm. You feel me? But it was, it was, and I got to get back to that space because I was entrenched with a gnosis that I was, that it was only one thing in the universe and that was me, right? I think they call it being, it's, that's geocentric, right? Mm -hmm. You at the center of the earth and the center of the earth is separated by two hemispheres of your brain and that middle passage is what needs to be fed you know, continuously with, with that particular, um, that, that Kundalini fluid, that manifestation. Um, it, it, it did me great in terms of holding that, 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 that mental space in my mind and communicating with people and treating everyone like they were a, a reflection and an expression of self. You know what I'm saying? My heart chakra was all the way open. Um, that was a dope period in time. I would advise people to get on that level and attempt it. You know what I'm saying? 
but it has to be through love. It, it can't, it can't be, you know, or it shouldn't. Let me can't let me not say that it can. It should not be from a place of um where you're getting drunk on ego. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I get it. I get it. Because ego could be intoxicating. Yeah. Yo, yo, Red, I had a thought that you'll get when you if you're a pothead, yo. What if that the when you say when you're on a train and everybody's looking at you? What if that's like a, a glitch in the matrix where they really are looking at you, but you're so convinced that they're not that you, you, you get what I'm saying? Because since they're all reflections of you, maybe in another um alternate universe. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Yo, Red, you going to answer that? <laughs> I kid you not. I don't know where this brother's at. For the longest time, I felt like I was in a Truman Show, and you couldn't tell me nothing. Cause I was I, and I think I told him about this. This is how much I used to go through it because I had my breakthrough first, mm -hmm. and I'd be like, "Yo, son, I think they on to me, right?" Mm -hmm. Every time I'd be on the train and I turn around, they all be like this at the same time, and I'm like, "What the hell is it? You feel me? They could read my thoughts, they could hear my thoughts." Or I'm on cable, I'm on a cable show somewhere that I don't know about. I'm popping like right. <laughs> I'm the most streamed dude ever. And this is before streaming. <laughs> well, I'm highly convinced that they're watching us on a big screen on I mean hundreds of thousands of people. <laughs> you know, hundreds of thousands of people. Yeah, like I've I've felt like that for a long time. I've, I've I've just felt like this was a script, you know, and it is what it is. Like you know, a lot of people put on more than they than they let you know. You know what I mean? Because there's people that I've seen before, and and I know who they are, but I don't say nothing. I'm just observing them, you know, and I can make it look like I don't know what I don't know them. But I, I don't know who they are. So I think that's the same way that things go. I mean, it is what, you know, just got to give them something good to look at. Yeah, man, no, definitely. Let's um let's take a few questions from the from the people in the chat. What's going yeah, on? Shout out to the chat. Shout out to the, shout out to your um Black Magic family, man. Yeah, shout out, shout out to the family. About look. 30 in the morning. We still got about twelve hundred people in here. Shout out to y'all being up with us. We just black had magic a matters. Yeah, black magic definitely does matter, y'all. Yeah. Going into that blackness, man. Hold on, I gotta get you the drip. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. I get you that drip, my young. Oh, I, you know, I just realized that what your shirt says. Oh, okay. I yeah. know that. That's what the shirt says. Yeah, black magic magic. Yeah, give me one, bro. Oh, <laughs> oh man. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm saying I'm I'm in Atlanta and uh there's a clothes, there's a boutique store that we work with out here. We have access to a lot of the new designers and whatnot. We plugged into a lot of the new brands, the entrepreneurs. It's a lot of entrepreneurs in Atlanta. It's lit. So we're gonna be you know, right now I'm just getting a lot of things together. We're in the fourth quarter, Rich, so I'm gonna let 2020 tap, you know, I'm, I'm gonna get everything together. So by the time 2021 comes, the new quarter, it's so much new things. This is harvest season though, so it's right October. We we rolling out a few new things, but um, you know, we working. Indeed. Yeah, indeed. Listen, uh, give me a few questions for the brothers red and blue. We'll probably take two questions. Uh, they asked, what, what's the sigil you have on your shirt, right? What's the sigil about? Yeah. Magic. Indeed. Magic, family, magic. All right. Straight up, magic. Lit, magic. All right, let me see it. I don't even know if I understand this um, question. What purpose do people and those that like to watch face serve? You understand that question? I don't know what that means. Yeah, I don't really. I 
don't really understand it. Watch face. What if you're a Gemini and you can't stay faithful to one woman? Oh, because it's mad at you niggas in one person. So you got to have all the shorties for your personality. <laughs> um, no, nah, I mean, that's real, bro. Nah, bro, I was with a Gemini. That's Gemini's super- be going through it. You feel me? Good luck. Um, yeah, good luck, Eaton. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you you gotta you have to you need a psychological evaluation of a Gemini before you get with them. You know what I'm saying? You should start by asking them. You know, so how many is y'all is there? And mm. then you gotta observe to see do that shit match up with that actual number. But know that you're not dealing with one person. You yeah, feel me? Would- so yeah, my mother always say it. You know what I mean? And, and I, I'm gonna repeat it and reiterate it because it's not just for Gemini's. You don't know a person until you do at least four seasons. Right. Just don't. Right. You got to be observant. You know You're going to have to meet those other personalities. You're going to have to meet no. them other personalities, and, and, and you're going to have to dig in and take notes because then you got to see, you know, for the next season, is that the same person? So you, you kind of got to gauge it for two whole seasons before you really, really make that move. I see people asking about Lovecraft um, country. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what it is that they're necessarily asking, but I will go on record to say that's the best show. What's your opinion on it? Oh, that's the best show that's on TV um, this year. Before that, it was The Watchmen. And before that, it's American Gods. Now, there's a black, they're giving Jordan Peele credit. He's the executive producer. He's not the writer. He doesn't receive the credit for this, okay? I don't want to take anything away from him, but it is a, it is, it's a sister. I believe her name is Misha Green or Misha Wright. She is a young sister too, beautiful young sister. Does not look like a writer of the show. I, I don't know what a writer looks like, but I was just was like, okay, all right. Um, she is reviving the Bobby Hemet Renaissance right. through popular culture. When it's all said and done and they do the writing on the Afrofuturism and they do the writing on how Bobby Hemet's teachings, his occultic teachings were merged with popular culture, they're going to point to that show right there. Because keep in mind, it's like how Panic pointed it out. The fact that the Lovecraft is public, right? His his writings and stuff, this is all original script, the show that we're seeing, right? This is all an original. She put all of this together with Hippolyta and, and um, Letty and, you know, all of the characters and whatnot. Son, they are going, when I say they're going in, bro, It, it, they're not leaving nothing unturned. They're go. They're, they're covering everything. So from and, America and the, and, the, and the timing. It's not only the they're covering everything. It's like how could you hit all net like that? All the, net. The weeks that those shows come out coincides perfectly with the conversation of the week. Like it's just crazy. Look for the past three years. They've been showing us through popular culture, through television, right? Through the media or through entertainment, they've been highlighting the rise of the divine black goddess, feminine energy. The show American Gods highlighted it. The show The Watchmen highlighted it because it's an origin story to Angela Abar who is next, who is the um the new Dr. Manhattan as a black woman? The only thing that the Watchmen series one or the first season was was her origin story, right? That's the only thing that that's about. How that black woman became God, and the European who's the director refuses to write another season, and then fast forward to this show, Lovecraft Count Country. And they took it completely all the way there. Whereas the Watchmen was edging you there and it was preparing you for this. 
now it not the way that they work this thing is they prep us and then they give us Lovecraft, 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 and that goes all the way in into the power of the black woman. I mean, it's touching on a lot of things, bro. It's giving you the occult background. It's giving you the esoteric. It's giving you the power of the black woman's imagination. It's giving you the power of the I am. It's giving you the power of. It's, it's, it's giving you the, the the dichotomy of the black woman who wants to be a white woman, and when they let her become the white woman, she's like, "I don't want to be a white woman anymore. I was in her skin. I want to be the controller and the creator of my own reality, of my own world." And that sentence right there was very tantamount to the mentality of what the liberated black woman is saying today. Right, being the manifester of her own destiny. That's why they on Kamala so heavy, because Kamala is going to represent that. Kamala will be vice president. I'm calling a landslide. You know, and you know that's it is what it is, but it's in alignment. This energy, this surge, this this divine feminine black woman surge. Right, that's the hottest shit on the planet right now. Mm -hmm. You know, and the cinema is pointing in that direction. Popular culture is pointing in that direction. The music is pointing in that direction. Film, everything, fashion. I mean, it's all pointing in that direction. So I'm highlighting the shows that are highlighting that. And they're not just giving it to you. And Yo, P fucking Valley, bro. Lit. Mm -hmm. Bruh, that was some of the finest cinema that I might have watched in a long time. They shot, they shot, they shot, they shot the shit out of, out of that show, bro. Mm. And even though it's dealing with the red chakra, the root shot, it's dealing with carnal, it's dealing with, you know, just base shit. It's a fucking pussy valley, right? But. But it's not. But it's not. But it's not. They're dealing with the mounds. They're dealing with Ooh, the resources. Oh, they was going. They're dealing, they dealing with you know that Mississippi Delta energy, right? Blue that miscegenation, right? The they're color of the, the cut. They're dealing with a lot. Even with even floods. with the yeah, even with the androgynous uh, the dude on it, mm -hmm. you can't run from life. That's part of the narrative. It's the Aquarian. It's the Aquarian, bruh. And that's dealing with, once again, the divine feminine principle. You could play with it if you want. They represent the base. They represent the foot, right? The strippers and the horse, right? They represent the mud. They're the base. They're the, they're, they're the, they're, they're the, they're the, they're the, they're the, they're the um, trenches. So Keep even in that. Huh? Yeah. I said, I keep telling you, a saw is a, I mean, a set is a female dog. Now, there's a varying degrees to that particular hierarchical system. Mm -hmm. You dig what I'm saying? Facts. But all of that energy comes under it. You know what I'm saying? It's just a high and a low. Two yeah, different ends of a spectrum. Yeah. But it's, it's all divine at the end of the it's day. It's all divine. You know, it's, it's all eight. it's yeah. all cloaked in divinity. So there's a lot of shows that are highlighting it. If people are able to get past judgment, if you could look past it, everything is not going to be given to us on a silver platter. Just you know, it, 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 no, it, you got to seek and find, bro. You know what I'm saying? You got to look beneath the surface. I even started looking at power. The new season. That's another story, but they are they are they are giving up a lot of information in Lovecraft. Um, you know, one of the things about highlighting LBGT characters in film, I said it before. After Empire broke records, that set the mold. They were, you can't rewind it, it. It set the trend. The girl, the girl, what's her name? Lena Waithe. The one who did 40-year-old version on Netflix, who saw that? That was fire. 
the girl, she's the writer for the shot. Once she got she her did, awards. She did Queen and Slim, yeah. Queen is, she did Queen and Slim. Once yeah, Tyler they Perry- They know you niggas better than you know yourselves. Like, yeah, cut it out. Yeah, once Tyler right? Perry made his studio. They know your proclivities. They know what yeah, you like. It's, it's, you're, cause people it's are gonna be like, bag. Oh, people are gonna be like, oh, there's a gay scene in Lovecraft. And I'm just saying, fam, y'all niggas, once the wire was critically acclaimed, they broke the mold. You're going to see that on all the TV shows now. That's the new Trojan horse. Not to say that I'm agreeing with it. They had the shit in Godfather Harlem. Niggas was getting raped in it. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Like, it's, it's, it's they're going to write it in every single series now. So miss me with the use your fast forward button. I'm not sitting through it. You know what I mean? When I watched P Valley, I was watching it like I was a nine year old. I'm covering my eyes, yo. There were certain things I could watch in that. But I'm gonna, you know, I'm not gonna allow that for me to not catch the story, you know. So it's some good, it's some good writing out there. Um for my Afrofuturists that are out there, please take notes. Black is King, Lovecraft, Black Panther, you know, they play Sun Ra. They play a clip of Sun Ra in the episode I Am, when a woman was in space floating and he was talking about black people being the myth, touching on everything that UNAA was touching on Blue Pill. I'm talking about giving y'all the capstone to what your conversation was. I mean, the whole, the entire scientific goddamn community has been given the capstone in that conversation. There's so much confirmation that has come since we did that lecture. It's just mind boggling. All the way to the point where even today they put the article out about Dragonfly 44. Yeah, I heard, I see. I okay. See. The galaxy that's nine, not not 99.9999999% dark matter. They're saying, dark oh, the galaxy. yeah, they like, it's observable now. We get to see it. What you think is making them observe these 44s? Or this shit, these other sides of these galaxies and all of that. You understand? So, yeah, to me, it's like the fame and all of that stupid shit. It'd be like, yo, watch the information, right? Watch the magic. Watch that. Watch the things that benefit the, the, the world. Like, you missing the most important part, which is the fucking magic. Too concerned with the personality. Fuck this shit. Right. What the hell is this? You feel me? Don't get caught up in the drip, goddammit. Don't drown in the drip. You missing the script. Because that's where you get the benefit from. This real-time information. You know what I'm saying? Seeing people bust out of the fucking bubble of, of, of mundaneness and actually get to this shit and really start shifting things in this galaxy, in this universe. My niggas, yeah, for real. Not on your block. Not on Instagram. The universe. Hmm. but you can't see yourself like that just like Hippolyta said they convinced you that you're so fucking small right don't come around here with that bullshit though you know what I'm saying because we don't buy into that program so I'm like shit like 400 million more motherfuckers need to see this I'm not even convinced yet you know what I'm saying like 400 million more need to see this. And then we could say that we at our sweltering point. A billion served. It's some real time information, you know, that has come about this year. That Corona rising was one for the record books, my niggas. Ooh. Hmm. Ooh. So, Thanks. you know. Um, I think we're going to just take one last question, then we're going to get out of here, family. Um, what's going on? Uh, I know a, qu a question earlier, a little earlier when I was looking, somebody wanted to know what exactly do you define as magic? I guess with all this talk about magic, people are like, well, what exactly is magic? Um, magic is the materialization from spirit realm into physicality. You know what I'm saying? I think that the best way that they explain magic 
in the um, Sorcerer's Apprentice, they said the manipulation of molecules. Right. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? The manipulation of molecules, because a lot of what's taking place can only be explained at a quantum level. So, you know, the, um, <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? The, 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 the way that I explain, even with the law of 44, it is the materialization of the unseen into the realm of the seen mm -hmm. and the evidence of the intertanglement between those particular realms. Right. You know, you're able to identify the threading points when the needle comes in and out. You feel me? And 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 and, and the magic is somewhere in between that. You feel me? But we are a people who they have made seem so basic, so fucking mundane, so simple. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That. We, we, we just, we can't see these things in one another. We can't see it in ourselves, you know, um, you know, excluding, I'm not part of that conversation, but mm -hmm. yeah, I just, you know, look, I can't even explain everything. I ain't even trying to, I'm at that point in my life that I just be like, I'm, I'm observing this shit just like you are to some degree. You feel me? When I seen the nigga LeBron with the phone, a lot of me like, look at this shit. You feel me? I'm gonna let Bella write my book, man. I can't even. I'm cool, man. My shit is like, it's too much. At sometimes it be so much to be like, look at this shit. It just lines up so perfect. And it's like you forecast it a whole year in advance and then it hits, boop. So I'm just, I'm just honored just to be here, you know, ob observing my own observations and adding something to the conversation where other people can observe as well and expand their, their minds. You know, we was talking about this. We keep talking about this, the importance of imagination. You feel me? Important of imagination. Yes, we, we speak a lot about the, you know, navigating these realms of reality, man, but I want to interject fantasy. I want to bring back imagination. You know what I'm saying? Right. I want to see a fucking flying dragon out here before it's all said and done. Like, yeah. <laughs> I want to see a unicorn, man. Like, I want to, I want to, I want to make the impossible possible. You feel me? So we could move on to the next phase and chapter of things. Because... And I think, yeah, I, I think that's why the show Lovecraft is so popular amongst our people and whatnot is because, you know, they're tapping into the imagination. They're allowing, you know, it, it's, it's a joy to see an all black cast and, you know, magic is taking place uh you know there's there's all kind of monsters on the show and you know they're allowing our imagination to expand right and yeah they they for the from a, for some of the very first time they are engaging you or inviting you to the table to have a conversation about magic and it's not through the spectrum of you know disney or nickelodeon you know you know what i'm saying cuz our babies get orientated at a very young age and indoctrinated with this concept of magic from the Wiccans, from these white folks. Right. But where have they had the ability to see themselves, right? Yeah. The, the Book of Secrets, a family Bible of magic? Like, come on. Yeah, and where, where have you seen on television where you have white magicians, right? And white, quote unquote, fraternal orders say out of their mouth yeah we you, 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 the magic comes from you this is what bobby and all of them used to say to us in lectures this was the premise of a lot of yes no no i'm saying from day one and it was only in the realm of hypothesis like maybe just maybe just maybe right wait know. close the door yeah maybe yeah. I think Bobby might be telling us the truth. 
Yeah, you know, maybe. after Bobby's 800th lecture, yeah. the same, you know how Bobby used to have the uh, the same three people in the front row? They'd be like, well, maybe this time he's going to say something to make me believe it. Like, <clears throat> y'all still questioning Bobby, right? All right, but cool. But check this out. A lot of, not just this show, but a lot of, of our, a lot of these script writers in Hollywood, you know, remember like the dude who was behind Boondocks, right? A lot of these people in high places and creative places, they're being inspired by teachers that we were inspired by. You know what I mean? By Valentine. You know, they're being inspired by Blair. They're being inspired by, you know, um, Bobby Hemet. You name it, Dr. Sabi. And they're utilizing the information and they're writing it into their scripts and whatnot. So, yo, Mr. G cracked the code and he said, Golden Child. Is that the movie that Eddie Murphy was in? Right, yeah. Said Golden Child was about Dr. Sabi. And we know because my mama was up in Eddie Murphy crib dealing with his father that that was a client of this. Yeah, back in the days. You know what I'm saying? Like, it'd be so much. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, the best thing that we could do, uh, Rich, in this community or this, these networks, writers, workshops, um, you know, taking weekends, you know, where, where there's retreats for writers and whatnot. Um, you know, groups of writers or creatives coming together and utilizing a new cloud-based software where you could just write on your phone and it just uploads. And we got to collectively work on these quote unquote scripts because as we could see, they're being made in Hollywood. Somebody is shooting the shit out of them. You know, those stories are being made now. We don't have to sit around and play, oh, they won't do no. No, I'm in Atlanta right now. Tyler Perry got a big ass studio out here. And if he won't do it, then it's like I said before, Hollywood had five major studios, not one. And that was the magic of Hollywood. That's how that's that was that was that's that was that's what created the look of Hollywood because MGM movies have a certain look, right? The other movies from the other studios had a certain look. They would shoot them in certain millimeters. They would shoot them with certain, with the soft lens. Some move, you know, uh, one, one studio was known for movies like Gone with the Wind, where they were giving you the white palatial, you know, uh, 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 um, antebellum type of look. Then another one was known for musicals like uh, uh, Fred Astaire movies and stuff like that. So it's the same thing with these black studios. We can't just have Tyler Perry studio. We can't have one studio. What are we gonna function off for one mind of one man? He don't speak for all of us. He don't have everyone's interest in mind. He's not that talented, no disrespect to Tyler Perry, but he doesn't have that spectrum of talent for us to say, we're gonna just give one studio and we made it because there's one studio for us. No, we need at least four. We need at least four. So he started and that's great, but we need at least four right now. And by doing that, we'll be able to see the, cause we're living in a Renaissance era right now. So there's a, there's a rainbow. There's a, there's a spectrum of different stories and different angles and different myths that need to be told, bro. And I can't wait because it's going to happen. Hey. I guess um so we'll wrap it up with that then I guess man uh leave your contact information red and blue for the people to holler at y'all yeah for the Chi Town family for the family in Chicago we are coming to Chicago this weekend we are the keynote speakers for the 93rd annual Morris Science Temple Convention all right that's going to be at the Hyatt all right you can find details on my page as well as Red's. My page you can find at Blue Pillar 44. Pillar is P I L L A R 44. Blue Pillar 44. Right? That's on Instagram. Um, Blue Pillar 44 at Gmail is the email. Dollar sign Blue Pillar 44 is the cash app. Of course, uh, 
My parents are sponsored by goldwater.com. That's G O L D E W A T E R. We have um, more information this coming very shortly. Me and Brother Rich dealing with the seven day Kundalini workshop. It is still being edited down and it will be available shortly for the people who have been inquiring. All right, all right. So, like I said, we got some new drip. You know, I'm working with some young artists out here, some new designers. They got some powerful stuff. Um, yeah. And we got a new website that we putting out called amark125th.com. That's going to have all of these different brands. I got the Garvey, the new Garvey drip, all embroidery. You know what I'm talking about? So we can step it up. This is all stitched. You know, uh, got the logo on the back stitched up and whatnot. Um, for all of my Instagram family, I had to change my name. The name is Phil, P-H-I-L underscore Moreland. That's my last name, M-O-R-E-L-A-N-D because of the fact we were getting cloned and, you know, there was all kind of copy pages on, you know, they did like, they did me dirty, man. The fucking Russian bots, it's like five copy pages. <laughs> they copied everybody. So I had to switch it up, right? Um, oh. Redsummer.com, that's the name of the, uh, my album is gonna be available on Halloween or All Hallows Eve, inshallah, God willingly. <laughs> And we're going to have an album release party down here. HP Lovecraft themed masquerade. HP Lovecraft themed album release party for Red Summer. And we dedicating this to Bobby. I want to do it right in Atlanta, in Bobby's land, in Atlantis. And it's going to be turned up. And it's going to be 420 uh, um, inspired. Friendly. Right. 420 friendly. And, uh, and, and plant medicine friendly. And we'll, we'll let everybody know about that. That will be on my Instagram and whatnot. Melanin Mondays live every Monday in Atlanta, in the West End. All right. Um, we got 640 more. Cafe. Yeah. 640 uh, Evan Street, which is 640 West. Every Monday, doors open at 6. We go all the way up into midnight. It's a showcase. You get music. You get food. You get vendors. You get information. You get you, you, you get entrepreneurs and whatnot. You get to network and network. you might meet your, yeah, and might, you might meet somebody who could be very interested in your life. So that's what's going on there. Chicago, we pulling up in Chicago. I see y'all in Chicago. And yeah, that's it. Peace. Peace. Yo. Yeah. When can they be expecting some new music? Real soon, man. Real soon. We got a lot coming, man. This Lux Cam uh, joint. Y'all gonna need to get ready Ooh. for this one. Top of November. Top of November. Red, I gotta send you son. I sent Blue Pill this track uh, with Lux and Cam. So I gotta I gotta send it to you, Red. But we're coming. We're coming. Wait, wait. I gotta send you some Red Summer tracks. We coming too. Please do. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's gonna be a great fourth quarter for music. Sa so Rock's album is out. You know, LSD is out. Um, you know, Red Summer is coming. It's gonna be some powerful projects out before we wrap up this 2020 to yeah. just commemorate this magical year because we need a soundtrack. We 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 got this musical movement going. I'm predicting by next year, we all gonna be on tour and living our best life. You know what I'm talking about? Because we deserve it. We put in a lot of work in the arts. The sciences is cool, but I'm really focusing on the arts because the arts need us. So, Indeed. love and light to y'all, man. Right, would that be- Peace to your audience. KTL Black Magic, we gonna see you next time, family. Peace. <laughs>